You may have to suffer. That's the title and the topic of today's Daily Dose. Now, I know that we love to rejoice. We love to celebrate victories. Who are, right? The rewards, the freedom that we have in Christ as sons and daughters of God. And we should rejoice. After all, we're told to rejoice in the Lord always. That's Philippians 4.4. Rejoice in the Lord always. But what about when things aren't going so great? Because here's the reality. We may have to suffer. I'll say it again. We may have to suffer. And, and I get it, okay? Believe me, I get it. Suffering isn't something we like to talk about. Suffering isn't something that we seek. Yet suffering is part of life, even for the believer. Recently, I've been getting a closer look at suffering. As I'm walking alongside my wife through her long-term battle with health issues, autoimmune struggles, infections, I'm in the middle of it, I guess is what I'm saying right now. And I've wrestled through thoughts of despair, even with tears. Just being real. Is my wife dying? I mean, these kinds of thoughts uh, that, that do bring you to tears and to worry and concern. And there are those days when emotions get that raw, that raw, as she goes from bad to worse with no answers, no hope from the medical community. And the good days, few and far between. But here's what Scripture says. Ecclesiastes 7.14 says that when times are good, be happy. But when times are bad, consider this. God has made the one as well as the other. Therefore, no one can discover anything about their future. It's the word of the Lord. That's truth. So suffering, it's part of life. Even Jesus was a man who suffered. Remember what it says in Isaiah 53.3? It prophesies of Christ saying that He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. I mean, that's talking about Jesus. Jesus suffered. He's familiar with our suffering, with my suffering, with your suffering. Therefore, we understand that suffering isn't an indication that, that someone is in sin or that they're out of God's will. We can't assume that. We can't assume that suffering is a result of judgment from God or the result of Him removing His hand from our lives. Rather, here's the reality. Just as we read in Ecclesiastes, suffering is just part of life. It's part of life in this broken world. And like all things, God will turn it for good and use it for His purposes, for His glory, and for our eternal benefit. I want us to check out 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning of verse 3. It says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy... He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Now check this out. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Now listen to this. In all this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. But suffering, we got to make sure that we understand suffering isn't some sort of badge of honor either. Suffering isn't in itself like righteous or virtuous. Suffering isn't a sign of holiness in our lives. It's also not a means of gaining points with God. Oh, well, I'm suffering, so I'm getting points with God. No. In fact, I would argue that when possible, suffering should be avoided. I just want to say it. It's, it's good to avoid suffering. Jesus avoided suffering unless and until it meant acting in obedience to the Father's will. He didn't look for it. If it's your will, take this cup from me, but not my will, but yours be done. And it was God's will for him to suffer on the cross. So, 
What does this mean for those of us who are suffering? 1 Peter 4.19 gives us this instruction. says, So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful Creator and continue to do good. The question we must each face is not if we're going to have trials or suffering in this life, but how will we respond when it happens? And look, even, even when we understand the purposes and the principles of suffering, and we know the promises of God's love and concern given in the Word of God for handling suffering, dealing with trials of life, it's still never easy because suffering hurts. It's not comfortable, it hurts. Yet, here's the reality, you're not alone. Jesus, come on now, Jesus, the one who also suffered, as we just read in Isaiah 53, right? Jesus, the one who also suffered, is with you. He is for you. He's with me. He's for me. His grace is enough. And we just got to tell ourselves, we got to remind ourselves of that, that He will uphold us. He will never leave us nor forsake us in the midst of our trials and our struggles. And He will reward us. You're not alone. We are not alone. In these times when life threatens to overwhelm, we, your brothers and sisters, us together in Christ, we come to each other's aid, it says in Philippians 2, 3 and 4. When, when a load suddenly becomes too heavy for one person, we are here to bear one another's burdens. This added strength and encouragement of the body of Christ is often the difference between pressing on or just giving up. We bear one another's burdens, as it says in Galatians 6, 2. Let me end with this. I want to end with Psalm 55, verse 22. It says this. It says, Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. Let me say that again. Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May He make His face to shine upon you. Let's continue to trust God. Continue to look to Him even in the midst, and especially in the midst of suffering. Be blessed.